Welcome to Electroline. In this series, we're going to attack the concept of virtual work. What's virtual work? Well, most of us are familiar with real work. Real work can be defined as the dot product between the force and the displacement. In other words, if an object is subjected to a force and the object is then pushed through a certain displacement, the work done is simply equal to the dot product of the force times the displacement, which is equal to the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between the two vectors. So what's virtual work? Well, virtual work is work done when you push an object through an imaginary distance. Hmm, an imaginary distance, what's that? Well, we'll get to that in just a moment. So let's look at our definition. Virtual work, which can be defined as delta W, is imaginary work. So you're not really doing real work, you're just doing an imaginary thing here. And it's imaginary work done when a particle, which is subject to a number of forces, is moved a small imag imaginary distance. So you have a number of forces act on the particle like we do here. In this case, we have a mass sitting on a horizontal surface. We have a force pushing it to the right, a force pushing it to the left, gravity pulling it down, and the normal force pushing back. So there's four forces acting on this object. Let's now assume that we're going to move the object an imaginary distance. We'll call it delta u, and yes, indeed, it's a vector. And so the question is, the forces acting on this object, how much work would they do if we move the object from here to here. Now, of course, we're talking about moving a very tiny little distance. Now, in this particular example, we've made it up in such a way that all the forces acting on this object actually cancel out, and the net force is equal to zero, which means the object is in equilibrium we can have a situation where the forces do not cancel out so that there is a net force and that the object then is subject to net force therefore it experiences an acceleration. Virtual work done on an object can apply to both objects at equilibrium like in this example or objects that are not at equilibrium that are actually accelerating because there's a net force acting on it. So what we're doing here is we're going to add up all the work done by all the four forces. Now, the virtual work done by definition is simply equal to the work done by each of the forces acting on the object, moving it through an imaginary distance, a very small little delta u. So in this case, we have four forces, so we're going to have four components added to the work done, or I should say, the virtual work done. So the first force, pushing to the right, times the displacement of the du, so we have the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. Since both the displacement F1 are pointing in the same direction, the angle between them is zero. Then we have the second force in the opposite direction. Again, we take the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. In this case, the angle is 180 degrees, so therefore the cosine of 180 will be minus one. Here we have the, the force of gravity pulling down on it times the imaginary displacement times the cosine of the angle between them. In this case, it's 90 degrees. Of course, the cosine of 90 is zero. And then we have the normal force pushing back times the imaginary displacement du times the angle between them, again, 90 degrees, which means that these two components, they drop out because they are zero. The cosine of 90 is zero. And so we have F1 du, which is a positive quantity because it's multiplied times the cosine of zero, minus F2 du because this is a negative quantity, the cosine of 180 is negative one. Then, since we have the two forces F1 and F2 of equal magnitude, then when we add these two up together, we get that to be zero, which means that the virtual work done on this object as we move it a small distance, delta u, is actually equal to zero. And as we will see later, that is one of the benefits to using the virtual work concept because when objects are at equilibrium, when a particle is at equilibrium, when a truss is at equilibrium, we can then say that the virtual work done by moving a, the members of a truss, for example, a small amount of distance, the total work done will then be equal to zero. 
And that then will enable us to find the forces on those members. So there's actually a useful technique here that we can apply to find forces on more complicated structures. So the concept of virtual work is that we take a bunch of forces acting on a particle or acting on a particular point of a, of a truss or something like that. If we then imagine that we then move that point or that particle a small amount of distance, an imaginary distance, because we really don't move it, how much work would those forces then do when we add them all up and the particle or the truss is at equilibrium, not moving, not accelerating, then the sum of all those will add up to zero. And that's what we mean by virtual work done, in this case, on a particle at equilibrium, but it can be done on a particle that's not at equilibrium, and we'll see later how to do that as well. And that's how it's done.